Okay, so this is my Mako smoker, and I talked about it in my other video. Uh, maybe I didn't post it, I'm not sure, but uh, it, it just failed. It just failed. It just failed miserably. And uh, I thought it failed, and I was messing around with this variable temperature switch, and it seemed like it was working okay. And when I loaded it with meat and everything else, it just failed. So I'm going to do something. I took the element out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly like I did with my cold smoker. Uh, and I'm going to create a place on the very bottom of this thing to put a single burner uh, heat, heat uh, single burner uh, electric element is what it is. Anyway, so this is it right here. Uh, no big deal, huh? It's exactly like the one I put on my other smoker. Um, so. Yeah, this is it. It's going to control the heat. I'm just going to cut a uh, cut a place on the smoker. It'll allow this to protrude and keep this on the outside of the smoker so that it doesn't overheat and cause problems. So that's going to be a trick, though, trying to mount this one on my other smoker. It was uh, pretty simple. So this is the Weber smoker I was telling you about. I cut a hole on the top to allow a two and a half inch or three inch uh, aluminum flex pipe into my other smoker thus making it a cold smoker and here is the element I was talking about and it's very simple just cut the bottom off find a way to mount it and you are done so this is my this is my goal here today is to make a smoker that I can smoke uh, and have some good heat from that's, that might be the trick too, is I might have a problem with some heat. So I'm going to have to see how that goes. It might be just beating a dead horse. I don't know. Alright, so here's some of the tools I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using my boss stitch jigsaw with a metal blade. I think I have the old blade in here. It just didn't seem like it really uh, took a beating, so I'm going to try to find the old one. I have. Uh, self-tapping drill bit or self-tapping screw so that I can spare a drill bit and not risk breaking it because I'm going to drill down the center. I'm going to find the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this through the center, this deck screw through the center, and I'm going to get a string and just basically make a make a circle underneath there. So I've got my grease pen ready to go, I've got my tin snips, I've got some plumber's tape. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I think I'm going to run my tape from here to here type of thing to try to support this. Uh, and that should work just fine. Got a crescent wrench. And the reason is because on this one here it's actually very convenient because I took the bolt out of, out of the leg situation here and simply mounted this single burner underneath it which made it very very sturdy so I'm going to try to recreate that in some sense but uh, yeah okay here is said string assembly uh, see if I can get my my grease pin to work it seems like it's kind of dry I've been shaking the hell out of it Anyway, so the, it needs to be seven inches opening, so it's a three and three quarters of an inch uh, spot on my cord. So that worked out pretty good, as you can see. Okay, first I'm going to drill a pilot hole. For my bit, or I could do a plunge cut, which is going to make a lot of noise. And my wife's sleeping, so I might have to just call it quits. For a bit. I know I should do a pilot hole right there. Okay, there's a number of ways I can do this and drill a pilot hole and then use my. Just try to cut around it. 
I can do a plunge cut like this. I think that'll make too much noise. My wife's in there sleeping, so... Let's try to keep it quiet. That's my pilot hole for my bit. Like I thought, I need to take off the legs. Okay, so I got the legs off. Round. The big thing is I might have woke up my wife with all that racket, so I better get this smoker done so I can cook myself some food. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put the first one in, and I'm going to uh, turn off the camera. I might be running out of juice. Got me a whole bunch here. Uh, so, all I did is I folded it over. I wanted to make sure I'm using the small holes so the head of my screw doesn't want to slip out and it doesn't matter all this stuff doesn't have to look that pretty so like that I think I'm gonna do right here back in for bolt or not a nut. So there. Tighten that up. that when I put the top on, uh, see it's bent right here, I just need to make it round again and that and also for the lid too. So let's get to doing that. So that's how you do it. Okay, there it is. It's all bent back into shape. Uh, it's all put together. I don't even do do a test run on this yet. Uh, actually, I probably should turn it on and see how hot it gets. I need to find another thermometer though. But this is gonna be interesting. So let's get back to the testing portion of this video, huh? 
Okay, so we're actually doing pretty good. It's like uh, 200 degrees. It's all the way up on high, so I'm going to lower it down to about 4 to see what that does. Uh, so the whole thing is this here device is a chef alarm. It's got a probe in it. You stick it in the meat and feed it through one of the doors or whatever, and it has an alarm letting you know that your meat has reached a certain pre this preset uh, temperature. So I just lowered it down. I'm gonna check it out another 10 minutes or so. Okay, so I'm actually looking for a temperature between 150 and 175, and uh, I got 175 exactly. All right, man. So next time you see me, I'm gonna be smoking some brisket or something, and. Uh, all I need to do now is get me a little uh, stainless steel plate to go in there to hold some wood chips and I am off and running to the races, smoking races, right on. So, need a new thermometer too. Alright man, over and out.